So for this tutorial, let's just do a little bit more. For one thing, I'm gonna take the load game menu and I'm gonna set that to be not transparent at all. I'm also going to add some padding to all sides and we'll add in a title panel. So right click panel and then make sure that this is centered and stretched on the top. I'm going to decrease the height and then let's add a title text there calling it load game and we'll also add in a button for closing the panel. So I'm going to put this button in the top right hand corner and you can change the image if you want a more fancy looking uh, button for closing it but if you just want a really simple prototype of an X button you can just go to the text as a child element under the button and change the text to X. You can also set it to best fit so that it is going to be a little bit bigger. Now we're going to want to take this button and somehow once again either through script or you can directly attach the method right here. We're going to want to close the load game menu. So I'm going to actually reference the load game menu object here. I'm going to drag this down below and I'm going to take the game object that that's set to and I'm going to set it to not be active. So we're taking the load game menu object and we're calling the game object dot set active method and making it set to inactive, which is exactly the opposite of what we're doing here with this open load game menu script. Now to show why prefabs are powerful, uh, we did already create a load game menu prefab, but now it has extra stuff associated with it. And if we ever want to call a load game menu from anywhere else in the game, we don't want to recreate it every time uh, that we need a load game menu. So what we can do is we can basically update the prefab. So the quickest way to do that, if, it, if it's light blue here, that means it's attached to a prefab and we can update the prefab with all the values, all the objects that are nested under it, simply by hitting prefab over here. So now this load game menu prefab has the panel, the text, the button, and the buttons text all associated with it. And we can add it to our game anywhere we want exactly how it is right now. Uh, but yeah, make sure it's actually instantiated onto the canvas or it's not gonna render properly. So you can see now we have a second load game menu, which is exactly the same as the first. You can see if I enable either of them, that they're exactly the same. So if you haven't gotten too used to prefabs, I really recommend you start working around with them because they'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, so we can delete this extra game object from the hierarchy. We don't need it in the scene. Um, now let's just go ahead and test the load game menu and the button one more time. So we're gonna hit play. We're gonna get the load game menu to pop up and I'm gonna hit the X button to close that menu and we can keep cycling between them. So now we have a working new game menu that has a new game button, a load game button, and an exit game button. Now the load game, obviously you can't load the game yet. There's a lot more coding that needs to go into that. Um, but we have the basic framework for our menu at this point. Now, uh, one last thing I want to do with this video is to create a new scene. And we're going to call this the level one scene, just so that that new game button has something to actually load into, uh, basically proof of concept here. So I'm going to hit play on our sample scene and I'm going to hit new game. And what happens? Uh, what happens is we get an error because that scene hasn't been included in the build setting. So, uh, in order to do that, we could drag this scene into the hierarchy and set it to unload scene. Um, and I think that should work as long as it's in the hierarchy, it'll be referenced. But we can go to file build settings and add open scenes to make sure that that scene is going to be included in the build when we actually export our game to the different devices that can play it. So yeah, if you're ever wondering why your scene can't load, make sure it's in scenes and build here. Um, but now that it's there, I don't think we even need to have it in the scene. I, I don't even think we need to have it in the hierarchy anymore. Uh, we just need to reference it at least that once. So let's save the scene one more time, hit play, and try to hit that new game button. And we hit new game, and it loads level one, which has absolutely nothing in it except for a camera with a blue background. But we can tell pretty easily that that's different than this one, uh, because this one has the canvas on it. <laughs> I guess the, the camera color is actually the same blue background. You can change that, by the way, if you want. But that's the basics of how you create a main menu screen from a technical standpoint. In the future, we'll talk more about how to have save game screens and load game screens that are fully functional with saving and loading all the data 
Uh, but for right now, that's going to be it for this tutorial. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future Unity content.